Hey guys, Peyton Hatch with KR or Kuka Rankin. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit more in depth, detailed. You know, it's going to go over how to take a, a point cloud um, from Cyclone into AutoCAD and generate uh, generate some spot elevations, some uh, you know some four levelness, floor flatness reports. So it's kind of our end product. And I wanted to show you how we went from point cloud to floor flatness. So let's just uh, let's jump in and get going. So within side of Cyclone, you know, we, we did some scans with the RTC 360. Uh, we did not bring them to control. These these control points here were just you know, part of a training exercise. Uh, but this is our scan. And from in here, we can remove the top section. So you make it a little bit easier to, uh, to see the data. Um, and then we took it from here some more and we cleaned it up so that we had just the ground. We did the smooth surface routine, region grow smooth surface. This is in both in Register 360 and Cyclone Core or Classic. And it goes and removes all of the, uh, the ground data or just the, uh, the noisy data. And from here, we, we publish this point cloud as an LGS file. Close out of here, minimize this down. So see, I have an LGS file. Okay, so how do we take this, grid it out, make a surface out of it? You know, so the way we did it is I took the points on a grid command, and the first thing I do is I set my origin on my, on my point cloud. I then specify my spacing, you know, a 0 0.5, half a foot grid. Uh, and you are limited to how many points you can create with this at a time. So if you have a very, very large area, you will need to divide it up into sections. For this training exercise, I'm gonna do a half a foot grid. I'm gonna have it do a search radius, you know, search for the lowest point within, within, within 0.3 feet. So it'll find the ground point. And it'll give it a raw description of GRD or GND. So let's, Oh, make sure your grid display is turned on. And then draw your grid. You know, typically when doing a floor flatness, floor levelness, you want to make sure you keep yourself a foot off of the, uh, the edges of the wall right there. So there we just cooked, took, created our grid area. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to place the points. I could do a preview, but for time's sakes, so I'm going to go ahead and tell it just to place the points. You see, it could be too dense. So it could take some time, so go ahead and just hit yes on continue, and yes, and we will compute these points. All right, it just finished, and as you can see, I now have points on the grid, yeah, on, a, on a perfect one-foot grid. What we can do here is because I have these points now, I, I can turn off the point cloud. So with inside of my cloud works, so I'll go in here and I'll hit my point visibility. My cloud's now off. In all reality, I could close my CloudWorks project. I'm not going to use it moving forward. Okay, so let's go here to my points. Oh, no, sorry. My point groups, all point groups. We'll create a, a new point group. And I will call it surface, grid surface. This step is optional, but I like doing it. I will include points with raw descriptions mass matching G and D. Apply. And we'll press OK. All right, so now I have all my points here. You notice my elevations are negative 5.65. Most of them are. So this thing is pretty darn flat. Because um, we didn't actually set this to control. We simply um, you know, set up a scanners and shot. All right, so. Now we will go to surface, create a new surface. Okay. Go to my surface definition. And I want it to use point groups, add a point group. And I'll use it, add in the grid surface points. And okay. Give AutoCAD just a second here to process through that point, that surface. There it is. We have a boundary, you know, just so you can see what has been created. Uh, let me go here to my surface properties. Let me call it 
good surface. And let me change it to, you know, um, contours and triangles for now. Okay. So now you can see the triangles of the surface and the points are back here in the background. Excellent. All right. Now, what we can do here, if I click on the surface and I go to my surface properties, go over here to statistics, general, it'll give me a mean elevation. So I have a minimum, maximum, and a mean elevation. So 5.69. Now, in this case, we just want to know um, basically the, the deviation from zero. You know, uh, I want to know the high spots. I want to know the low spots. So what I can do is I can take this whole surface and I can bump it up 5.69 feet. So its mean elevation is actually at zero. And I'll show you why we will do that. So negative 5.69. So I will click on the surface. You do have to click on it here. You can't click on the surface here in order to get this, this menu. We'll go here to edit surface. Now we'll do raise and lower surface. I'll go 5.69, so it raises it. Now that surface has just jumped up in elevation. So if I click on the surface, go to my draw properties again, open up general, you now see I have a mean elevation of zero. Great. Okay, so now let me, uh, let me turn off my surface. Just hide it for now. I have my points. Now my points are showing point number, elevation, and the code. Make sure nothing is selected. You go and you can pick one of the points, right click, just select similar. It'll grab them all. You can right click again once it grabs all your points. And you can go elevations from surface. Now, because we've moved that surface to elevation zero, these points are now going to shift up to have that mean elevation of elevation zero, which is great. And yes, we'll use the grid surface to jump those up. Now, what you'll see is the elevations are all based off of zero or that mean elevation. So when I zoom in here on a point, see that one is right on the mean elevation, but some of these will be, I know down here, we're slightly off, you know, negative 0.02. Now we can click on these points again, right click, select similar, right click again. And we can go here to the properties. And right here, under the point label style, hit this drop down and change it to elevation only. And you can click out, and we zoom in, all we'll see is the elevations. All right, here we go. Now all we see is the elevations of those points. Now because we also moved the points, the surface has an error here. We go to the surface properties, go to the definition. That raise and lower is still here, but because we moved the points, that is now a, an issue. So we simply just need to delete that from the definition, hit apply, and just rebuild the surface, and press OK. OK, so now our surface is there. I want to make a few changes to the way these are visible. So I'll go here to my settings. And I will go here to my, oh, here to my prospector, go here to my points, my grid points. I'll go here to the properties. Make sure I change that to elevation only as well. And let's edit it. So we show the point elevation. We'll scroll down some more for a border. I want to put a border on this borders it out. I think they look better with a rounded circular border. We'll keep them white, um, but my background mask, I am going to make it true. And I'll pick the white color and apply. And I'll make my text. Let's make it 0.4. 
apply it again, and we will apply and press OK. Apply. Making some adjustments, and OK. Now we've got a nice label around our point cloud, or around our, our points. So let's turn our surface back on. But this time, instead of the, the surface style, let's do some elevation banding. And let's edit the information by elevation. And let's do, yeah, number of ranges. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll up it. And we'll hit apply. And OK. We'll just see what that looks like. OK. All right, so there is now the elevation of the surface. Nice elevation map. I'll right click on the surface. I'll do display order. I'll go send to back. And now I have all my points showing, say, no deviation there. That's pretty much right at zero. And so there is a nice report. And you can, of course, play with the elevation map to how you want it to look. All right, so I'll show you one last setting before I go, before we end this video. Um, if you scroll in, you know, we've only got this set out to two decimal places, which is probably not enough uh, for most of these reports, at least not for something as flat as, as smooth as this surface was. If you go back all to your points, up to your points, properties, go to your label style and edit it. What you can do is go to the contents. So I wonder point elevation, so that's the only thing that's true. You go down here to the contents. Click this arrow. You click over here on the right-hand side. These are all the contents of what it's displaying. So we only have a precision of 0.01. Now, it is critical that you click in here. You have to click this. Then you can go change the precision, and you have to send it over to the right. So now it's been adjusted. I can now press OK, and I can hit Apply. OK, I will then apply it down here. This will take a moment for it to process this and get the adjustments made. As soon as it's done, we'll press OK. We'll zoom in, and we will now have four decimal places carried out. There we go. So 0 0.0025, 0 0.023, negatives. So right here, we're down to the negatives. I think up here on the top right, we were high. You can say. 0.04 high. So, all right, guys. Well, that's all I had for you. Thank you for watching. And yeah, let me know what you need next. Thanks.